Vivian and welcome to St. Petersburg in Russia. We have flown five hours to get from London to this beautiful city. I remember watching the film Anastasia as a kid and wondering what it would be like to be here. And now I am! Temperatures in St. Petersburg can get very, very low. A few weeks ago, it was minus 21 degrees Celsius. <gasps> I have never been in weather that cold before. Luckily, today is only minus three. A true symbol that people may associate with Russia are the Matryoshka dolls. You may know them as Russian nesting dolls. What they are, are a set of dolls that get smaller and smaller with each one. They're made in all certain shapes and sizes. You can open one up and put the smaller ones inside. When they are all stacked inside, it looks like one big doll. But then you open them all up and surprise, it's a big family. The original design was of a woman dressed in a saffron, which is an oversized dress. Then the smaller ones become younger females all the way down to a wee little baby. Nowadays, they are a big tourist purchase. You can get the dolls that look like anything from superheroes to farm animals. I'm here outside the Hermitage Museum, which is also known as the Winter Palace. Not only does it sound like it's from a fairy tale, it looks like it too. I wouldn't mind living here. From the years 1732 till 1917, this was the humble abode of the Russian monarchs. It is such a beautiful building, built in such a stupendous size. It was built on this momentous scale to show just how important the Russian Imperial was. In the 19th century, the Tsar ruled from this palace. He owned lots of land across the earth. He was in charge of 22,400,000 square kilometers. That's over one eighth of all of the land on Earth. At this time, he was in command over 125 million subjects. Whew, talk about pressure. The Winter Palace has over 1,500 rooms 1,786 doors and 1,945 windows. Oh my goodness. Each room in the Winter Palace was built with such thought in mind. It has a color scheme with a little bit of gold here and a little bit of marble here. The Royals no longer live here and we are very lucky enough to be able to walk around the Hermitage Museum and see all the precious art and see some of the rooms exactly how they were. Let's go have a look and see if we can find a ballroom. just outside the church, Saviour on the Spilled Blood. Isn't it beautiful? It has a very interesting backstory. There was a man called Alexander the Great II and he ruled the country here starting in 1855. Not many people liked him ruling the country and there were many attempts on his life. Sadly in March in 1881 his life came to an end, but it was decided that as a tribute they would build this cathedral here. So much thought and time has been put into the beautiful and stunning mosaics on the outside and on the inside. They were all designed and built by the most well thought of artists of the time. This is such an interesting building. There is actually a very similar church called St. Basil's Cathedral and you can find that in Moscow in Russia. What I want you to be looking at closely are the spherical shapes on the top of the cathedral here. You can see that they've got beautiful tessellating patterns. Keep that in mind and I'll tell you about it in a bit. A tessellating pattern is a shape that is repeating itself. It is when a repeating shape covers a surface 
and the shape does not overlap or leave any gaps. The best tessellating shapes are triangles, squares and hexagons. Remember to keep that information in your head. Okay, now look at the shapes on top of the church. They are spherical. It is a bit tricky to make a sphere out of paper, so we are going to be looking at some similar shapes. First, you need to know some things about 3D shapes. A 3D shape is a three-dimensional shape, meaning that it is not flat. 3D shapes have faces, edges, and vertices, which are the corners. Meet our two 3D friends, Mrs. Dodecahedron and Mr. Isosahedron. Mrs. Dodecahedron has 12 faces, 30 edges, and 20 vertices. Mr. Isosahedron has 20 faces, 30 edges, and 12 vertices. Okay, activity time. Now that you've seen all of the beautiful buildings and sites here in St. Petersburg, we're going to do something about it. I'm going to give you three activities to choose from. Activity one, by looking at a photo of the beautiful church that we have just seen, I want you to use 2D shapes and draw around them and see if you can recreate your own picture of the cathedral. I want to see how many of the 2D shapes that you can name. Activity two, now this gets a little bit harder. Remember the dodecahedrons I was just talking about? Just like the balls on top of the church? Well, you're going to be making some of your own. You can either use one of the already made nets or you can make up some of your own nets. To make them look even more beautiful, you can do some tessellating patterns on the net before you stick it together. And activity three is exactly the same as activity two. But instead of a dodecahedron, I want you to try an isosahedron. Okay, well that's it from me. I have really, really enjoyed exploring this beautiful city and I hope you have as well. But my fingers and toes and my nose are starting to lose feeling so I need to find a place to warm up. Enjoy your maths activities and I'll see you next time. Dosvidanya!